Yeah, I um, I wrote a blog post about online dating and Tinder in particular because I found out that the the guy that the, one of the co-founders of Tinder sold it, bought and then sold a mansion for thirty five million pounds, and I just thought that was so morally wrong because in order to have achieved that level of success, you have to have brought such an incredible value to society. And the stats on Tinder just show the amount of um, sexless young adults, single young adults has skyrocketed since the introduction of Tinder. And I, 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 I compared it to, it was a, it's quite a controversial thing to compare it to, but I compared it to the opioid crisis and the Purdue farmer, um, the Purdue farmer who put out uh, OxyContin. And I said how they profited billions of pounds off of people and they used the term, they used compassion as a way of pushing their medicine through because they said they wanted to help people. But really they knew what they were doing was wrong. And it's quite a, a stark contra comparison to make, but I feel like it's a very, very, um, a far softer version, obviously, of that phenomena, the what's going on with dating apps and how, you know, the, the, the advantage that women have on dating apps is quite, if you read the statistics about men swiping right to about 60% of women and women swiping right on about 5%, it's, uh, it, it speaks of the, the, the advantage that women have in the dating market that I think we're seeing played out now nowadays and the tendency towards what I would call extreme hypergamy which is what is I see playing out in a lot of well all you have to do is look at Instagram and go through the memes that are populating and it's all sort of you know it's yeah that was a bit of a rant but do you sort of you understand what I mean about the there's no, there's been nowhere near enough value. It's really interesting. As you've been talking, I'm, I'm totally like glued to my screen and, and listening in. And I've really noticed Good. the terminology between, you know, our ebb and flow of conversation, what you're saying. I'm saying the words like investment. You're saying the words like value, market. And so I'm just hearing like how it's like a monetization process. It's always like Absolutely. I'm investing sources and it's like dating is a commodity right now. And yeah. it's, this is what happened. It, they, sorry. Yeah. They, they what they, yeah. what has happened is it, I suppose as a result of it is capitalism, but it's not just a product of the right, the, of the politics, which is what's usually associated with capitalism. They, they're, periodically progressively they're stripping away aspects of humanity and selling it back to us because i'm convinced i think dating apps are going to die in about 10 i give them i want to say five years but maybe 10 years i don't know it might even be less could be more hopefully it's not so what they're doing is they're if you don't pay a subscription you're at such a disadvantage nowadays in in um in my experience and they they play all these little tricks on us so when you get into a new environment they front load all the attractive people at the beginning so that they get you hooked on a little bit and then you always come back i mean i don't know for this i don't know these things for certain but i feel like they're playing games on us in so many ways i think so. <laughs> even though you don't Pardon? even though you don't know for certain i think you know it's a pretty good guess 